I'm Janice Cortez. Today, let's look at my painting Splash, as we demystify some of David Hockney's creative choices. Here's the first mystery to investigate today. What exactly is David Hockney's Paper Pool 18? Is it a drawing? A painting? A collage? Maybe sculpture? There's no easy answer now, and the artist had none in 1978 when he completed this mural size, paintless painting. His picture, simultaneously amusing and mysterious, in both subject and technique, is composed completely of mounds of colored paper pulp, pressed in 12 separate sheets, which together form one large image. The second mystery is simply, why? The choice of such a cumbersome medium seems at first to be at odds with Hockney's gifts. His controlled lyrical line can be so impressively descriptive that the decision to trade that sublime mastery for unruly mounds of wet paper pulp cries out for explanation. The mystery quickly begins to evaporate when we recognize that Hockney's Paper Pool 18 is actually a collaborative effort. Ken Tyler, head of Tyler Graphics Limited, had been asking Hockney for some time to produce limited edition multiples with his workshop staff. And the uncommon medium, handmade paper, was Tyler's suggestion. The image of the swimming pool, a longtime Hockney theme, became their focus when the artist agreed to try Tyler's experimental medium, partly because Tyler's own backyard pool was near the workshop and could serve as model. The challenges were daunting, but Hockney found in them an escape from the finicky constraints of the work he'd recently been doing. He later claimed that the project had indeed freed him to paint more creatively when he returned to employing paint and brushes again. In my own painting, Splash, I adopt Hockney's dominant blue and yellow and then add the red he omitted. Small notes of green and orange and a hint of violet round out the spectrum, but the primary colors, blue, red, and yellow, retain starring roles. I wanted the visual satisfaction that the presence of full spectrum offers the eye while still allowing the blue of Hockney's picture to retain its commanding presence. In my search for supporting compositional elements, I found some poetic contrasts to his simple, flat shapes. The French Art Nouveau ceramic pot, the playful carpet pattern, and the curvaceous striped sofa all contribute their good-natured refinement to the scene. The little bookshelf at the lower right, still respecting the power of blue, displays books about other 20th century masters, including Diebenkorn, Frankenthaler, and Motherwell. And notice that one book, facing outward, is showing us Fernando Botero's Europa and the Bull, yet another light-hearted image that, like Hockney's, celebrates the timeless allure of clear blue water and bare skin. Thank you for joining us. I hope we'll see you again soon. If you enjoyed this episode of Demystifying the Masters with Jenis Cortez, like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. If you are an art collector planning to enhance your collection, we invite you to view more of the Cortez work at JenisCortez.com. <laughs>